and I have many things in common. We're dear friends. But we each have a first Kathy Lee date story. Yes, I need, let's hear yours. You want me to go first? Yes, please. <laughs> So I'm newly arrived in New York after going to school in Boston, living there for a couple of years. It's 1982 or 83. And I was very single at the time. And I see this very attractive young lady on the air at ABC. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe I should call and try to have a date with her. Mm -hmm. So the only person I knew at, at ABC at the time was Frank Gifford, mm -hmm. his old family friend. <laughs> so I called Frank and I said, Frank, can you get me a date with Kathy Lee? And he says, I'll ask her, I'll get back to you. He calls me back, he says, okay, she'll definitely have lunch with you, but she's a little shy, so she would like you to come to, uh, she would like me to come to lunch. So I, my date with <laughs> Kathy Lee, <laughs> Frank Gifford was right there. <laughs> Needless to say, the rest is history on that one. He had more dates with her than I did. Yeah. But the Giffords were at my first wedding. And at one point during, and this Kathy Lee writes in her book, mm -hmm. Frank leans over and said, jerk, if you'd played your cards right, this could have been you. <laughs> she still says that a little every right. now and then. <laughs> so Kathy Lee, and I tell that story all the time, I know uh -huh. you're aware of it, but then you had your first date, yes, Kathy I Lee. Yes, I did, I did. I was hosting the 10 o'clock hour with Natalie and Anne. It was the three of us. And it, you know what, it was one of those that wasn't working because it was all fluff and laughing and scratching and everybody's, you know, it was a little too serious, I think, the ensemble and it wasn't working. But we were trying anyway. And one day uh, I went with uh, a friend of mine, Amy, to a restaurant and we looked over and we saw Kathy Lee at a table. And we go, is that Kathy Lee Gifford? Oh my God, that's Kathy Lee. Has she had work done? You know, all the, <laughs> so we go, let's go over there and say hi. So we said hi. And, and you know, at that point we, I needed a guest co-host because I think one of the, both of those guys were going to be off a day next week. I said, are you free Thursday? Could you come? And she's like, let me check my calendar. So Thursday comes and there she is. She has these hair extensions, her boobs are out. She doesn't even care. She was irreverent and funny. And all of a sudden the show was alive. So we did that one day and afterwards they went to her and they said, look, we're thinking about maybe bringing you on board. What do you think? And she said, well, let's, let me have a lunch with Hoda because I don't know her very well and we just had that one show. We went to lunch at the Rainbow Room, okay? We, they snuck us upstairs. It was all very clandestine and secretive. We get up there, we, had, we talked about our lives. She talked about her life, her first husband. I talked about mine. We talked about breast cancer. Our fathers both passed away when we were young. We talked about everything. She stood up at that table and started singing. And I was- <laughs> At the hooked. Rainbow Room. She did not care. She just sang out full voice this song. And I was like, oh my God, is she just singing? She does not care. I love people who don't care. And she let it rip. And I remember looking at her and I thought to myself, this could work. And I thought, and Cass said the same thing. She said, if we could duplicate this lunch on the air, it could work. If we don't, it, but you have to be authentic and real. So we started, we started working together and um, I haven't looked back, not for a minute.